This is video number 16. In today's video, I'm going to be making the prototype of that much improved saltwater fishing clip. And I'm going to show you how I made it in real time. I'm going to show you the jig that I made and the product that it turned out. It is important that I show you how to do your own prototypes and get your mind working on this so that when it comes time, you're going to be able to create a rough facsimile of your product, whether it be on your kitchen counter or out in your garage. It is critical that you build a prototype to the best of your ability so that when you take it out into the real world and you present it to a manufacturing facility, they get a firm grasp on what your idea actually is. This way you can communicate with the expert on the manufacturing end what your vision is. And this expert is going to help you, unbeknownst to you, how to fine tune it through the materials that he or she is an expert in and the manufacturing processes itself. The other reason for you to do this, and you're not really thinking about it quite yet, especially if you're a novice, is you're actually inventing. You're developing a real life product that you would eventually want to get out into the marketplace. And when you start tinkering with the design, physically start tinkering with the design. You come up with special things about inventing that you hadn't thought about, such as patent claims, if you're gonna file a patent, what's unique about your idea, how you might wanna go about trademarking it if that was what you're gonna do. And during this process, something magical happens. Manufacturing techniques, sometimes trade secrets at this point will appear and you'll be able to develop a quiver of trade secrets. So there's a whole host of inventing and marketing that gives birth during this period. And it's very crucial that you undergo it. You cannot, under any circumstances, in my opinion, based upon my experience, disregard the prototype development. So without any further ado, let's go over to that segment of the video. So in this segment of the video, I'm gonna be building a prototype for you of that much improved clip, that saltwater clip I was talking about. So what I did here was I took a a piece of scrap wood and I painted it white so that you could see it and I drew a rough center line and then what I did was I laid my clip here and I wanted to find the top part of the bend the bottom part of the bend and I wanted to locate this center piece that comes along and I'll show you how I did it now, I reversed engineered this. This is what I ended up making. And this is a pretty good facsimile. And I'm going to make one for you right now. So what I did was, I located those, those spots. And I took a drill and I just drilled in these drill bits. They all pretty much have the same size shank, same size drill bit. And I tapped them in to form a peg layout. Then I took my clip and I laid it right there. And as you can see, these, these shanks touch tight against the upper and the lower part of the bends. Then all I did was I took a piece of same gauge copper, it's a little heavier. This is about 16, maybe 18 gauge, and this is a gauge or two less, but it's the same principle. 
And I took this wire This is the hardest part of the whole operation, forming this particular bend, keeping tension on it. This hole's worn out, so I have to pretty much come up here like this. As you can see, I pretty much have the design here. Now, this particular inventor would have had to play with this quite a bit. I mean, I'm just reverse engineering it, and that goes a lot faster than creating an original. So you pull this off. Snap it there. And I'm exaggerating the receiver. So as you can see, that's the clip. There's the receiver. That's a good shot at the receiver. These two pieces right here are supposed to be tight against each other here. And... At this point, this piece has to be right even with this and pressing tight against that. But you get the point. So here's what happens. You have to build a prototype of the product that you're, that you're going to try to get manufactured or the product that you're going to try to license or hawk to a partner a company, a distributor, etc. So this person with something as crude as this, and it could have been made out of copper, brass wire, stainless, steel, bailing wire, it doesn't matter. The gauge doesn't so much matter either. That can be all worked out. So here's what he needed to have done, and he did it, of course. He looked up spring manufacturers, wire pullers, different components that are made out of wire, springs, paper clips. He located somebody close to his area and he walked into the manager's desk. He put this down and he said, I want to manufacture this. The person who was going to do the bid and the takeoff looked at this crude thing and said, I'm going to need a little time. I'm going to make a prototype in my shop and I will give you a price on the materials on what it's going to cost for you for um, dyes. They would use a dye, not a mold. Whether it needs to be quenched or annealed, he'd give him a part count, a long run and a short run and away he would go. So it's crucial that I showed you how prototypes can be made very readily. This is just a cheap vise. It's a cheap piece of wood. It's a piece of scrap. It's worthless. Had some drill bits. I just had to think about it. He would have had to have put more time in it than I did because I already knew where I was going. I was just taking this and I was going to figure out how I was going to reverse engineer it. However, he did have the paper clip and he did have to play with several or maybe many iterations before he got it in this point. 
the other thing that is good for you to know is when you do come into a a manufacturing facility or a shop and you bring in something rough these people are experts in their field they're going to tell you what you need to do whether you need to put the bend here whether it's touching whether it needs to be annealed that you need to have a receiver here so that you can get the eye of your snap into it. See how that goes? See how that goes? So they would give you all sorts of advice there. And that's how it goes. So it's very important that we did this prototyping. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to get into the reasons why you should prototype what comes of it, meaning patent claims, trademark claims, trade secrets, specialized knowledge. And it's about building a castle around your idea, whereas it is a deterrent for others to copy or steal your idea. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. God bless. Ha, ha, ha.